right, everybody, welcome back to the Honest God podcast. We're super excited to be here. And I, I know I don't have to announce what number show we're on every single time, but this is our second show, which is which I'm really pumped for. So we've got uh, we've got one one returning guest. I'll let her introduce herself again. You still have to give us five, though. I was actually hoping you wouldn't start no, with me again. We're gonna, I'm going to start with okay, you. You're going right. five, and then we're going to go all the way around. Okay, but I am... I'm sorry, but I don't have to do five again. That's a rule that I not... just made up. No, it's fun. Can you, you have to Trust do one. Me. Fine, I'll do and one. And it can't be your name. Deal. Okay, I am Madeline. I have five siblings. I... Literally just had so many on my head, but they disappeared. I like rings. Okay, that's a good one. I like to play tennis. I have been to New York several times, and I learned to swim when I was three. That's six. You're killing it, Madeline. Good job, Benedict. <laughs> Hey, I'm Benedict. Um, I actually work at the Archdiocese of Atlanta. I'm a media specialist in the Office of Evangelization and Discipleship. Uh, I love old music, both the Beatles and Frank Sinatra, but I do like some modern music. I may <clears throat> or may not be a closet Swifty. Um, I was an actor in high school. Uh, before I worked at the Archdiocese, I worked at the World of Coke, first I guess the ambassador, and then I got promoted to the Polar Bear team. Heck yeah. And uh, I graduated. I'm a 2015 graduate from Georgia College in Milledgeville. When did you work at World of Coke? Just out of curiosity. Uh, November 2015 through April 2017. Never mind. I, my first date with my wife was to the World of Coke, but it was well before 2015. <laughs> I, I'm the least young, young adult here. <laughs> Luke. All right. Uh, my name is Luke. Um, five things about me. Um, I love Jesus. Uh, <laughs> All right. <laughs> No, uh, I, uh, I go to um, Christendom College. I work at Chick-fil-A. Uh, I love baseball. I've been playing it since I was like from the womb, honestly. I uh, also love playing piano as well. So Big shout out to Christendom College, by the way. I'm a, I'm a big fan. I know a lot of people up there. Oh, really cool, we can cool. talk about that later. Nice. But yeah, nice. absolutely. Hey, my name's Dan. I've been to Japan, England, lived in Iowa, and I have lived in somewhere else that I can't remember because it probably was Iowa and not that exciting. That's fair. I, so, I like how shout you... Shout out to everybody from Iowa. Heck yeah. <laughs> we, got a big, we got a big fan base up in Iowa. So. I'm sure. I'm yeah, sure. No, we'll get some emails. Uh, and I am John Henry, and I've got one more thing. I've got a dog. His name's Jeff. There you go. Does that count, Madeline? It does. That works. That works. I like that. You can run, run mine. And mm -hmm. a big shout out again to... Benjamin Barron over there. Ben looking good. That's me. <laughs> uh, ben does not have anything about himself to, to express, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. You can see all you need to know. <laughs> You're rocking it. Uh, all right, guys. So today's topic, we're talking about friendship. And once again, I know that sounds kind of hokey on the surface, right? But it's something that's super important. We're talking about making friends, qualities of being a friend. And as we sort of grow this mission of this podcast here, a big one of the big driving forces behind it was this idea of connecting people and building communities, particularly young people who might feel like they are alone in trying to be an authentic Catholic. And I know a lot of you guys have expertise in this. I assume most of you have friends. Uh, Benedict just wrote an article. That was a joke. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Benedict wrote an article recently for the, uh, for the Georgia Bulletin, uh, the Archdiocesan newspaper for Atlanta. Um, on making friends as a young adult. And the reason I think this is so interesting is I feel like we have so many people who you leave high school or college or whatever your comfort zone was, and you have those people that you've known for a long time, and all of a sudden you're out and you're in this big world with a lot of people you don't know, and you're trying to balance, how do I maintain, how do I stay true to myself as a Catholic who cares about the faith and at the same time branch out and meet people? So thoughts. Madeline, you're always up first. Okay. <laughs> no, you right, right, right. okay, so I was thinking about it, and right now, like, the group of friends that I have, I have met them all in college. So I've literally known them all for less than a year, but, like, I feel like I will know them for a lifetime. Um, just because one thing that I did that I realized that I didn't do, like, in high school or any time before that, because I didn't really have the opportunity to, but I centered all of my friendships around faith. So, like, my our my what I, how I see it, I mean, I think my friends do as well, but all of my friendships, we connected on faith. So it's just kind of like an unbreakable force, in my opinion. So that's why I think. What does that look like? 
Um, it's great. It's very like open-minded like you don't have to hide anything because you all have the same beliefs and it's just like like for the first time it kind of felt like I didn't have to worry about anyone judging me I didn't have to hide anything from my friends I didn't have to like try well I mean when you, when you say oh. you're basing a friendship on faith, faith how do you do that um just I don't know like well we mentioned in the introduction podcast um Janice was saying how, like, if you become friends with Jesus, then you become friends with anybody. And it's like you, like, I literally, I became friends with Jesus. I talked to him like a friend. I treat him like a friend. I, so it's actually, it's funny. Sometimes I'll be, like, doing something and I'll be like, yo, God, did you see that? Like, of course you did. But, like, <laughs> that was cool, wasn't it? That's awesome. So it's like, yeah. like, and it's just, like, my, my dad actually always taught me, like, whenever I was praying, talk to him as if he's, like, like, have a conversation with him. Like, talk to him as if he's sitting right there. And like pray to him like that, and so that's yeah. And I think that's something we struggle with as as Catholics in particular. You always hear the Protestants who will talk about your personal relationship with Jesus, right? And do you have a personal relationship with Jesus? And our answer should absolutely be unequivocally yes. Mm -hmm. But we struggle with that, I think, sometimes. And they kind of give us, you know, they 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 poke us for that, and they should because I think a lot of Catholics really struggle with the pageantry and you know all of these things that are great that the Church offers, but they forget about that heart to heart connection with our Creator. What about you guys? Yeah, Luke. Well, I was going to say, for me personally, like growing up, I had more of the like, you know, relationship with God as the, you know, old guy upstairs, you know, with the long white beard and everything. Right. And it wasn't until, you know, like my teenage years, I started diving into preparing for confirmation and stuff that like my sponsor really encouraged me to like, hey, like, why don't you try to develop a personal relationship with the Lord? And when I started doing that, like Madeline was saying, just talking to him as a friend Oh my gosh, it changed everything. Like I dived so much deeper into my faith. It became like real and tangible to me in my everyday life. And then I was able to apply that to my friendships because you know, like Madeline said, we we shared the same principles, the shared same share the same faith. And then with that we could like push each other and we were struggling. We knew we all had the same goal, which is of course heaven and living a good life. And so we were able to push each other when we were struggling. Um and yeah, just surround ourselves with Christ, do Catholic things together. Um, so yeah, it was awesome. That personal relationship with the Lord, though, it, it really means the world to having good friendships. That's great. Dan? I think really on my side of things, it was, or at least me, finding a group of friends that had the relationship with Christ and had that strong basis to go off of, came off of getting out of high school and also getting out of college the five, six times I dropped out, uh, conversation for another time, but finding a group that was, had that structured basis, had that rock, if you will, not to allude to anything in the Bible, but I am, <laughs> um, but just finding that. So I'm a very structured person, at least I'll say that for the sake of this instance, but something that helped me found that group was volunteering in youth groups and finding other people as said by two other people here that had the same morals same goals same outlook on life if you will having that friendship with god first so no that's that's great i mean i i distinctly remember you know i, I was in high school and i was uh i was a fairly popular guy I had lots of friends i went to lots of parties and i didn't actually have a single real friend like what you were saying or someone was saying about how the end goal is heaven right I didn't have anybody in my life who thought that way. And as I slowly worked through my conversion and I started to think that way, I ended up going to college and I chose this little bitty Catholic college. that doesn't exist anymore. Shout out to all the Southern Catholic college alums out there. Uh, and I went to this school hoping and longing for something, but having no idea how to do it myself. And I distinctly remember I was at a big house party. We had this big party, big, you know, had a keg and everything. And it was like 1030. And one of my buddies goes running around the house with a cowbell and telling all the girls they had to leave. And I was so angry. I was like, dude, why, stop. That's literally the only reason I'm here. Uh, if you take the girls, I just have the beer. And that's a, that's a second, but it's not, it's nowhere close, right? And so all the girls leave. We sit down and we're hanging out in the hot tub, smoking cigarettes and drinking beer. And I say, why did you do that? And he said, well, I'm not letting anybody get in trouble, right? I'm not letting you make a bad decision. We're not going to be drinking a whole lot while there's girls around here. And then we sat together, me and him and a group of guys drinking beer. These were athletic, cool guys who I really like enjoyed being around. And we talked about things that actually mattered for hours and hours. And I walked away thinking, 
oh my goodness, I actually have friends. Like these are actual friends who actually care about me. Now, Benedict, you're in a little different situation because you're not in college right now. Can you speak to this a little bit? <laughs> I'm old. Me too, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I graduated in 2015, and from 2015 to 2017, I was working at the World of Coke, and so their hours are not your standard nine-to-five job. You, when you work in hospitality, your hour, you work when people don't, and so I would not get off work. I would take Marta to and from. I would not get home until after 7.30, so not very conducive to meet new friends. So for the first two years, I... I had some friends that from college that were around the metro Atlanta area, but a lot of times they were busy and I was busy, so didn't have many that I could consistently see in person. And then when I got the job at the Archdiocese, my hours got a lot more normal, so I thought, okay, now that I have set hours each week, where can I meet people, meet young people? And luckily I had a friend who was involved with the young adult group at the cathedral, 2030-somethings. And so I went to one of those events and it was great. But as anybody who goes to a social situation where you don't know anybody knows, it is extremely nerve wracking sure. to go up to a group where you know nobody. So I thought, okay, what can I do to make sure I actually talk to people? Because we all have smartphones now. And what is your default when you're like standing in line, you got nothing to do? What do you do? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You take out the phone. Exactly. So I thought, I know what's going to happen, and I see people do this all the time. I'm just going to take out my phone and just wait for somebody to approach me or just wait for wait for the cowbell to come out and tell <laughs> us, all right, you got time to move somewhere. So I volunteered for to be a greeter. Easy job. I work in customer service before, so I can, you know, it's easy for me to say hello to strangers, but it forces you to do something. And also being part of that small greeter ministry, that alone introduced me to some other people that were also in that greeter role. And from that point on, I started to meet more people, both from greeter ministry and just people coming in. And that's how I started to become the, I eventually became joined with the leadership team at the, at the Cathedral Young Adult Group. And that's how I met a lot of the friends I have now. Yeah. I feel like being Catholic is a super countercultural thing if you're going to be authentic about it. And it's almost like you need to plug yourself in purposefully to authentic or Orthodox Catholic groups and people. I mean, through volunteering or through the Catholic Center at your college or through whatever it is, right? We don't all go to, to a Christendom or a Southern Catholic or a Franciscan or one of those where there's sort of this base level of, I'm pretty sure everybody I meet is going to be on board. And I hear stories all the time about people who, who meet somebody and they've got this great relationship. And then all of a sudden they find out, well, they're really living a super contrary lifestyle to the way I am. And I'm not saying never talk to anybody who's not on board with everything that you are, right? <laughs> they don't have to fill out a questionnaire to hang out with you. But it's it you you really have to be purposeful about it. I feel like, especially once you get outside of a high school or a college environment where you are comfortable. So we talked a little bit about making friends, but this is this next question. I think is something that's a little harder for all of us to to answer and to really do a good job with. How do you how do you act as a friend? How do you be a good friend to somebody else? So you might have an example. Yeah. Well, okay. I didn't have an example, but well, I, eh, okay. You just uh, roll I, with it, Madeline. Like, I know you kill it. Um, you kill it every time. I like where this is going. <laughs> um, okay, but one thing for me personally, how I see it is like with my friends, I will do everything for them or like act to them as I would want them to act to me. So basically like the golden rule, like treat others how you want yeah, to Yeah, I thought there was some smart guy but, who said something about that. Yeah, <laughs> um, but like it's just, it's so much easier that way because then in that situation, what's the time you're giving and it just feels so good to give. And even if you just like, like what you're receiving is a friendship. Like, cause if you find authentic friends, they will see that you are giving and like, they will receive that and they will give back. Okay. So yeah, that's absolutely. just, that's how it's always, like, it's worked for me. So <laughs> I would say it's pretty good. Madeline is one of the easiest people to like that I've ever met. I still remember when you first showed up to my youth group and you were just amazing, like immediately, just like the nicest, most talkative, friendly person in the entire world. So well, I'm honored. Thank good you. on you, Madeline. <laughs> Thank you. What else guys? Yeah. I think kind of going off of what Madeline was saying, just being there for friends, just supporting them, serving them, doing what you can to be a good friend for them. I mean, I don't think it's a cut dry thing that you can label how to be a good friend. It's just be there for them. Simple as 
can be. I so like no that. steps, nothing to it. Well, it's because we're called to love everybody, right? And that's to, to love unconditionally, right? We're supposed to unconditionally will the good of the other for their own sake. And that does involve something that I'm really uncomfortable with, right? Pride is something I struggle with in a big way. And the idea of I'm supposed to serve my friends or I'm supposed to allow them to be a friend to me. I had a, a buddy of mine one time who said something I thought that was super profound. He said, to be a friend, to be an authentic friend to somebody is almost like opening up your chest and pointing at your heart and showing them like, this is how, this is how you could hurt me, right? This is what you could do to hurt me. And I'm allowing myself to be vulnerable and showing you my true self so that you can, you can serve and I can serve and we can do this together. And admitting our brokenness is super difficult. Maybe not for other people as much as it is for me, but, uh, that's something I struggle with that I think is really important. Yeah. So uh, our tagline is, or not tagline, but our title is Honest to God, right? So you want us to be honest, right? Please, that'd be great. Okay, so I'm probably going to have to turn in my man card after this, but um, have you ever heard of a popular 80s show called um, <clears throat> The Golden Girls? <laughs> Absolutely. Do you remember how that theme song goes? R.I.P. Betty White. Let's yes. Pour out a libation. Do you remember yeah. how the beginning of that theme song goes? I don't. So the beginning, first off, I reason I turn in my man cards because I may or may not have seen Please every sing episode. If you want to sing the whole intro, oh, you no, can. I'm not going to sing the whole intro. Sing the whole intro. No, no, no. Sing it. No, no, no. I'm sure there's a copyright issue, but I can sing the opening lyric. I'm here for it. That's all I want. Our yeah. lawyers will it's, fight. It's worth it. <laughs> Thank you for being a friend. It's super, it, you know, it's cheesy, but it is kind of catchy. But I mean, it's a really, you know, good line in the sense that, I mean, a lot of a lot of times we want to be acknowledged and be told like, yes, thank you for being there. Thank you for being you. And a big part of authentic friendship is just telling somebody, I'm really glad you're my friend. Now, if you want to, when you say that all the time, you may be like, okay, now it kind of waters it down. But, you know, just reminding your friends every now and then, like, I'm so glad, like, we're friends. Thank you for, thank you for being a friend. And that's, that makes you feel really good. And knowing also that, like you said earlier, being there for them, you know, yes, sometimes we get busy, so you may not be able to respond to them right away. But, you know, we've interacted with people who will, you know, drop what they're doing and talk to you. And then the ones who say you're a friend, but they don't, they don't really, they take their time in getting back to you. So just acknowledging, thank you, thanking them for being there and actually being there for them. And uh, Benedict has promised that before we end the show, he's actually going to sing the beginning, not just say it. So uh, yeah, we're going to make sure to get back to that. waiting for the song here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I believe somebody else has something to say. <laughs> Madeline. Uh, okay. One thing that I was thinking about, or you were saying that, um, is just like like thanking the, like friends that you're... I actually don't know where I was going with that part, but I'm sorry. But it made me think... I appreciate it made me you think, acknowledging me. It made me, it made me have this thought. One thing, like, to... Like have a like have a friend is something, but to keep the friend is like just no judgment, um, because I have been in so many friendships where I've like been like a friend circle where there was just so much judgment, and so that's how that's how you have like inner circles inside of the circle. Sure, and, um, and all like that, there was right. the one time I was in tenth grade and I had a friend who was going through a lot, and she was doing, I would say like she was doing things that she probably not should have not been, or like she was just she was lost. Mm -hmm. I would say that. And everyone else in our group was, like, looking down on her. But, like, I was – I just, like, stuck by her because even though, like, everything she did was against my beliefs, I knew she needed somebody. So I just stood there and I let her talk about everything that she did. Like, and just because she needed somebody. But, like, and now we still – we're still really good friends. And that – and we've been friends for, like, seven years now, I think, or something like that. So, like, one thing is just no judgment because, like – it affects somebody a lot more than you would think. So a follow-up question to that for everybody. We all have been in situations, or I've, I've been the one who needed a friend to do this for me as much as seeing this happen with my friends, but where someone is doing something that's destructive, something that is a moral evil and is rotting their soul in one way or another, right? They're sleeping with their girlfriend or they're involved with drugs or they're, they're doing something that is, that's awful and bad for them, right, as a, as a person. Where is that line from, you're right, we don't, we don't mm -hmm. judge souls, but we judge actions. And how do you navigate that? I talk to high schoolers about this a lot in my job of when, when do you need to say, hey, I, I need to talk to you because I love you. And how? How do you do that? Yeah. Well, I was going to say first, it depends on the relationship that you have with this person. I think one thing that uh, we can try to do sometimes is we want to fix people. And mm -hmm. it's out of love. It's a great, it's a great thing. You want to you help others. 
But sometimes you just have to be willing to walk with people from where they are. And there is that time when you might have to have that uncomfortable conversation and just be like, hey, man, you know, like, you know, this isn't the best thing for you right now. But uh, you have to be willing to walk with people and um, not like, you know, again, not make them feel, you know, unloved in their, you know, because, you know, sin makes us, you know, be filled with shame. So these people are already in a, in a very vulnerable and tough position. So it's our job to, you know, drop seeds in a very kind and charitable way, but also to like, hey, try to steer them in the right direction. So I really think it depends on the relationship you have with the person um, and where you can drop those seeds, when you can have those conversations. And then also remember for yourself personally that, you know, not all the time we, we can't fix everyone. So we also need to, you know, trust in our Lord as well to help you and to help out this situation to, you know, make it work out for the best. So, yeah, no, I, absolutely. I think that's great. I think that's something that if anybody else has any, any thoughts on that, I think that's something that we deal with in, in a big way. Um, I had uh, that same friend I was talking about in the hot tub who just kicked all the girls out. I remember him sitting down and part of the, that conversation that time or another time, there was lots of hot, uh, not hot dogs, hot tubs and beer time in college. And he, but, but he, he said to me and a group of guys, he said, all right, guys, um, so you're probably all struggling with porn. And we all just sort of like stared at him for a second. Like, that's not a conversation. You know, I don't want to have that conversation. Like, yeah. He said, and then he says, yeah, no, you probably all are. I've struggled with it. So-and-so struggled with it. Let's talk about that. And it was, once again, that aha moment of you actually care about me. But more importantly, it was a good lesson on how to be a friend and what that looks like. Any other thoughts on lines and where they get drawn? And I think just kind of bouncing off what you're saying is it's important to talk about those uncomfortable things, face the things that we may not want to face, because if we don't, then it's only going to get worse. Mm. You know, if your friend's in a cart on the loose going towards a cliff, you got to just sit there and go, oh, man, that's really bad. I hope you figure it out. Yeah, and I, mean, I hate I to hurt your feelings so. by telling you you shouldn't be in that cart. Right. Yes, exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But being a friend, are you going to be the one to sit down and be like, and I really hope you find the brakes or, you know, jump out at some point or are you going to try to do something about it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'll, just to add to that, like, I mean, we live in a time just in general where people just don't like to talk about the uncomfortable things anymore. And sometimes some of those uncomfortable things are some of the most, like, meaningful things of life that we just kind of ignore nowadays. So, yeah, just to add, like, we need to take courage and just be willing to, you know, have those conversations because – in my own experience, I can say too, like when we have those uncomfortable conversations, it's usually led to a lot of good. Like usually a lot of these, especially guys, you know, had this in their heart and they were like, they wanted to talk about it. But especially guys, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't like to be vulnerable. We don't like to talk to other people. Right. You know, we just keep that all in. But when you have a good group of guys and, you know, you're just willing to you know, talk about some of the uncomfortable stuff, you know, it, it actually brought about a lot of good and a lot. Of, and then the guys, you know, you can walk together. You can uh, push to that better good. So yeah, take courage, be willing to talk about the hard things. And it's so, imp and it's, it's so important to have that friendship because isn't there the Bible verse that says like, you know, true friendship is, it's essentially, you know, like a crown jewel almost to find right. that true friend. And I remember a priest saying once in his homily, you know, a lot of us have acquaintances, you know, oh, good to see you. How you doing? Good. How's so-and-so. But he said, you know, a lot of people usually just have like one to two really, really good friends. And those are the friends that you, John, were just talking about, the ones that you can open up to and say, this is where I'm struggling. Right. No, absolutely. Y'all, this is a great topic. I feel like we could do this for hours. We're getting close to time, though. We are going to continue on with this same topic in our next episode. But before we end, I'm a stickler for the popsicle sticks. I've decided I love the popsicle sticks. Everybody grab one. I want to go through. I'm going to take one and grab one of these, answer the question. Do you want one, Ben? All right, I got you one. <laughs> Producer Ben is uh, is gonna. You want to start us off, Ben? I'll start us off. I feel like we don't um, get enough of your face on the camera, and it's really worth showing. So <laughs> thank you, John. I appreciate that. Ben's one of my friends, by the way. Uh, can I get a different popsicle stick? <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> this this will be a good one for you. Oh, cardio or weights? Uh, I prefer weights personally. Um, I feel like it's less work for more gain. Hey, oh, okay. I like that. That is my my input. Dan, what you got? My question was, how useful would you be in a zombie apocalypse? It's a good one. I would say, <laughs> on a scale of 1 to 10, I'll rate myself at an 8. 
Why? You have to give us like I was some. I say you lived in because. Iowa, right? <laughs> so. there, there, is, there is that. There is that. I don't know what that would buy me in a zombie apocalypse. It would probably be something. But I will say an ain't for sake that I feel like I'd be pretty prepared for it, yet all too lazy to open the door. That's, that's, why, why go outside? That's the whole problem with these movies. They open the front door and then the zombies get in. Just close the, the door. The zombies will starve to stay, death eventually. Stay, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Just yep. stay inside. Let's keep it simple, people. I like that. Keep the door closed. Don't Good. let them in. <laughs> keep it simple. Luke. <laughs> so mine is, would you rather give up cheese or chocolate for your entire life? This is a very easy one for me. I love chocolate. The more chocolate, the better. I will not be giving that up over cheese. I'm on team cheese all day long, man. I, I would, agree with you. I can I handle would, no I chocolate. I give up cheese over chocolate. I love <laughs> Italian food, Mexican food, all the good foods I got. <laughs> Nothing but cheese, mostly cheese. I could eat only cheese. If they t- <laughs> if they told me to pick one, I'm not sure about the GI issues with that. But that cheese is healthy for you. Cheese is healthy. You heard it here. Yeah. What you got, Benedict? Uh, would you rather be covered in fur or covered in scales? I thought scales because I thought, oh, I can be like a fish and swim. But I thought, yeah, but that's kind of ugly. And we love dogs and cats with fur, so I'll stay covered in fur. That's fair. I like that a lot. Madeline, what you got? I'm sorry. <laughs> I just slapped myself in the face with my thing. Um, okay, have you ever pulled an all-nighter? Yes. Fun story to go with it. So me and some friends went to the beach at the beginning of the summer, and there was three of us left because all the other ones were bums, and they left the day before we did. And so we were staying up talking, and we wanted to watch the sunrise in the morning because we were like, it's our last day at the beach. We have to watch the sunrise. And so we were talking, and it was like – I actually – it was – 12.30 because I it was tw- actually 12.34 and I saw the time it was 1, 2, 3, 4 and I got excited and I was like, oh, gotcha. it's only 12.30. If we fall asleep in 30 minutes, we could have enough time to wake up and go to the sunrise. And then like 12.30 turned into like 1.40 and then like 2.30 and it was 3.40 and we were like, all right, we need to decide like what we're going to do. If we want to watch the sunrise, we have to go to bed now and we're going to get like an hour and a half of sleep, but like we could do it. Or uh-huh. we could just stay awake. And so we stay awake. We packed all of our stuff up at four and then hit the road and went to the beach and, and you saw a, the sunrise yeah yeah That's we did killer. Like actually actually grace was there with us our our uh our show notes was... show notes she's doing great by <laughs> the way out. nobody can see her we don't have a camera on her but grace is killing it over uh, there with yeah. the show notes <laughs> But yeah, um, it was probably one of the funnest nights of my entire life. So that's awesome. Mine's what food do you crave? It's boring. Uh, cheese. Cheese. <laughs> yeah. uh, this episode of What Happens to God brought to you by cheese. Uh, no, but that's all. That's all the time we have for right now. Thank you for joining us on What Happens to God on 11:60 a.m. The Quest, Atlanta Catholic Radio. We hope to see you next time. God bless. <laughs>